Viewpoint. Rethinking Northern Taiwan's heat relief. White roofs, reflected light, and health balance. Original title. A push to cool Australian cities may inadvertently increase our skin cancer risk unless we act. By Hugh Stanford and Joe Hurley. The Conversation. Part 1. Summary. Australia is a land of punishing sunshine, driving officials to seek cooler cities by lightening roofs and pavements. While these cool city measures reduce heat absorption, they also risk bouncing more ultraviolet rays onto exposed skin. By brightening our built environment, we may unwittingly boost UV reflections in places where people assume they are safe, worsening the nation's already high skin cancer rates. Urban heat islands, where asphalt, concrete, and dark rooftop store and radiate warmth make daily life uncomfortable. Painting roofs white, planting shade trees, and adopting reflective materials promise relief. They cut energy bills, lower street temperatures, and offer respite from scorching noon sun. Yet this strategy relies on reflecting sunlight away which inadvertently scatters harmful UV rays across footpaths, playgrounds, and other public spaces. People standing under partial shade or strolling near light-colored walls could still catch UV exposure from unexpected angles. Australia's struggle with skin cancer is no minor concern. The climate, combined with widespread outdoor activities and fair skin populations, results in some of the world's highest melanoma rates. Past Slip Slop Slap campaigns promoted sunscreen, hats, and protective clothing, but new reflective surfaces introduce another layer of risk. According to emerging studies, reflected light from bright pavement or white roofs adds to direct sunlight, amplifying the danger for pedestrians, especially children, who often neglect sun-smart habits, how then can officials, engineers, and health experts find a balanced path? One approach is selecting which surfaces to lighten, focusing on rooftops that sit far above the reach of passers-by rather than big pavements at ground level. Rooftops do not bounce UV rays into people's faces and can safely reflect much of the sun's energy back into the atmosphere. By contrast, Wide expanses of reflective concrete can turn sidewalks into sources of indirect UV exposure. Another tactic involves planting more street trees, installing shade sails, and positioning awnings to prevent reflections from hitting sensitive areas where people linger. Technological advances may help. Researchers are exploring coatings that repel infrared heat, the part most responsible for hot surfaces without bouncing too many ultraviolet rays. Though not yet widespread, these coatings could let cities stay cooler without increasing skin cancer risks. Policymakers must also ensure that education campaigns keep pace with changes to urban design. Many people wrongly assume that if the temperature is mild or they are not in direct sunlight, they face less UV danger. In reality, Reflection can strike at any angle, including from light-colored pavements or building walls. Above all, a careful balance is needed. Australians cannot live with endless sweltering streets, nor should they be forced to accept higher cancer threats in the name of cool city measures. Through coordinated planning among engineers, designers, and health officials, along with steady public education, it is possible to diminish urban heat without exposing citizens to harmful UV reflections. The goal is to create cities that are livable, energy efficient, and mindful of their invisible dangers, so that in seeking relief from the sun's fierce heat, we do not invite an even sharper threat through reflected light. Rethinking Northern Taiwan's Heat Relief White Roofs, Reflected Light, and Health Balance Northern Taiwan with its dense metropolises and subtropical climate, spends much of the year under a relentless sun. Each summer, urban dwellers endure the heat island's effect, 
in which concrete and asphalt trap warmth and keep temperatures elevated well into the evening. Crowded streets, towering high-rises, and heavy traffic intensify this sweltering reality. Unsurprisingly, officials and planners are determined to cool their cities. Yet recent insights from Australia warn of an unforeseen hazard. While brightening roofs and pavements may reduce heat absorption, the added reflectivity can scatter ultraviolet UV rays, increasing the risk of skin damage. If city cooling strategies in northern Taiwan disregard this risk, they may resolve one predicament only to create another. A measured approach, combining ground-level shading, roof greening, and prudent material selection, stands as the most balanced way forward. Ground-level shading and the threat of UV reflection. City cooling proposals often focus on roadways and sidewalks. By painting them lighter or installing reflective coatings, planners hope to bounce sunlight away before it can bake the surface. Lower street temperatures keep pedestrians more comfortable and reduce cooling costs. But UV rays make little distinction between scorching tarmac and pale pavement. When they hit bright surfaces, they can ricochet unpredictably, exposing unsuspecting passers-by. Northern Taiwan's urban landscapes are cramped. Narrow alleys and tall buildings can create an intricate web of reflections, sending stray beams into corners that would otherwise be in shadow. Shaded walkways, covered arcades, and tree-lined streets are thus crucial. They grant pedestrians respite from the blazing sun and block or diffuse harmful UV reflections. Strategic planting is especially helpful. Street trees moderate temperature through evapotranspiration and also reduce UV scatter, softening the risk to those who linger outdoors. Rooftop measures. Reflective coatings versus greenery. Above the streets, rooftops form a vast canvas for city cooling projects. Across Taiwan, countless concrete rooftops absorb large amounts of heat, forcing building occupants to ramp up air conditioning Proponents of cool roofs urge reflective membranes or lighter colored tiles aiming to channel heat away from buildings. In principle, these methods help cut energy bills and mitigate the heat island effect. Yet officials must be aware that highly reflective rooftops may direct UV rays onto neighboring properties. Where elevations vary sharply, common in hilly northern Taiwan, Light from one rooftop could bounce down into balconies or street-level windows. Green roofs present an appealing alternative. By planting vegetation atop buildings, we can filter out a good deal of solar energy without sending large amounts of UV light into the air. Plant canopies and soil layers absorb heat, enhance local biodiversity, and even improve air quality. Nevertheless, green rooftops demand thorough upkeep. They require appropriate drainage, irrigation, and structural checks to handle Taiwan's frequent downpours and typhoons. Not every building can support a layer of soil and vegetation. In older neighborhoods, structures may not be strong enough to bear the weight. Even so, policymakers should encourage green roof adoption where it is feasible, offering subsidies or tax incentives. If widely implemented, this practice could greatly reduce rooftop heat absorption and lessen reflected UV. Selecting materials and colors wisely. Cities in warmer climates tend to opt for light or white surfaces in their roofs and pavements. These reflect sunlight well, lowering ambient temperatures. But if the reflective index is too high, more UV radiation bounces around, potentially harming people. One solution is to use materials with advanced coatings designed to reflect infrared, the key contributor to heat, without scattering excessive UV. Though still in development, these coatings might allow northern Taiwan's buildings to stay cooler while minimizing glare. Similarly, gentler hues, light gray, pale green, or other muted shades, can help strike a middle ground. Such surfaces reflect part of the solar spectrum while preventing intense UV scatter. 
finishes that are matte or textured may disperse reflected light more softly. Still, Taiwan's humidity and monsoon-like rains complicate these choices. Some coatings may peel or lose effectiveness in constant wetness. That is why careful testing and maintenance, particularly on rooftops, are essential. Over time, materials degrade, altering their reflective properties and requiring periodic updates. Education and public awareness. Even with the most sophisticated materials, the public must stay alert to the dangers of indirect UV. If cooler pavements or rooftops lead people to assume the sunlight is harmless, they may forego hats or sunscreen. In truth, scattered UV rays remain potent, especially in bright midday conditions. In northern Taiwan, cloud cover can be misleading as the sun's rays can slip through gaps and bounce off lighter surfaces. An integrated outreach campaign could remind residents that city cooling policies do not neutralize UV exposure. Rather, simple precautions, wide-brimmed hats, parasols, long-sleeved clothing, remain as relevant as ever. Schools play an invaluable role here. By teaching children about the sun's angles and the science of reflection, we instill lifelong protective habits. Shopkeepers, too, could hang advisories or offer shaded seating, fostering an environment of shared responsibility. The more everyday citizens understand about indirect sunlight, the less likely they are to be caught off guard by reflected beams. Balancing comfort, environment, and health. While the impetus to cool northern Taiwan cities is vital, especially given intensifying summers, urban design rarely offers an absolute panacea. Improved cooling can create new challenges if applied without foresight. Lighter streets, for instance, could reflect enough UV to cause an uptick in skin complaints, particularly among delivery workers, street vendors, or seniors unable to limit their outdoor time. If rooftop measures fail to consider reflectivity angles, neighboring buildings might face additional glare, prompting complaints or health concerns. Green roofs, though less reflective, demand more investment to maintain. They also hinge on building owners' willingness and ability to sustain a rooftop garden. Advanced coatings promise an elegant compromise but must be tested in the field, accounting for Taiwan's high humidity, typhoon patterns, and potential wear and tear. Meanwhile, tree planting programs must navigate congested sidewalks, underground utilities, and heavy foot traffic. Each measure thus requires a thoughtful application, shaped by expert input from architects, environmental scientists, and healthcare professionals. Moving forward with caution and resolve, a robust approach might begin with pilot programs on select buildings or neighborhood blocks. Local councils could monitor temperature drops, changes in energy consumption, and shifts in UV exposure. If problems arise, like unanticipated glare or peeling surfaces, planners can adjust the scheme before rolling it out citywide. Building codes, too, could be revised in stages, mandating certain reflectivity limits or green roof coverage for new developments. Where old structures are renovated, Property owners might be given incentives or rebates to adopt moderate reflectivity roofs or partial roof gardens. Throughout this process, local authorities must keep the public informed. Declaring that reflective streets and bright roofs solve the heat problem could lull citizens into ignoring UV risks. Instead, the narrative should stress trade-offs. To ease urban heat, we may use materials and designs that alter how sunlight behaves. Accordingly, there is a renewed need for shading, protective clothing, and surveillance of unexpected glare. City cooling measures also tie into broader sustainability goals. Cutting down on heat retention lowers energy demand, thus reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Green roofs, beyond moderating temperature, bolster biodiversity and promote mental well-being. 
Shaded sidewalks make walking and cycling more appealing, shrinking both traffic and air pollution. In essence, Northern Taiwan's leaders face a choice. Either address the heat island effect in isolation or tackle it through a holistic strategy that weighs comfort, ecology, and health side by side. Conclusion As Northern Taiwan races to cope with rising temperatures, it must not lose sight of the hidden costs of reflectivity. Lessons from Australia illustrate that a single-minded quest for cooler streets and rooftops can pave the way for heightened UV exposure, impacting people who rely on outdoor spaces the most. Fortunately, a balanced approach, combining moderate reflectivity, rooftop greenery, shaded walkways, and public education, can bring relief without sowing fresh hazards. Through thorough testing, collaborative policymaking, and widespread awareness campaigns. The region can reimagine its cityscape as both cooler and safer. In that way, Northern Taiwan will prove that clever urban design does not have to pick between comfort and health, each can thrive, provided we are vigilant about the forces we unleash in the name of progress. Thank you for listening. If you enjoy our contents, please like, subscribe, and share them with your friends. Turn on notifications to stay updated with our latest uploads. Thank you for learning with us and growing together. May have a wonderful day.